another day. Okay. When you get an opportunity in this game, you make a play. Yeah. The playmakers on three. One, two, three. Perfect. Touchdown, Kansas City. The Chiefs are right in the thick of it, baby. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Defending the Kingdom. All of our Kingdom defenders, Mitch Holtis with you, voice of the Chiefs, along with senior team reporter Matt McMullen, a.k.a. Matt Stat, and back by popular demand, the barbershop, uh, the Spider-Man, Sean Barber, terrific career in the National Football League, great civic leader now uh, throughout the Chiefs' kingdom. Good to see you all back. Um, before we get into football, we get around the world to talk about our folks that are uh, kingdom defenders with us uh, on this podcast, literally throughout the world. Prayers go up to every person affected by Hurricane Ian. I mean, this thing, uh, this is rough for the Caribbean, the whole region, the Gulf Coast, and rarely hit on the east side, on the Gulf side of the Gulf of Mexico. But just a thought here about that. I mean, just real quickly, and my thoughts and prayers for everybody, because we're all connected. You know, our spirits, our souls, our minds are all connected. So it's always a, just a, man, it's a, it's a simple, you know, who do you know, who don't you know? I've mm. got so much family from the Florida area. Um, you think about Tampa Bay, Savannah, Georgia. You talk about McDonough, Georgia. All of those areas are getting hit. It's going to be devastating. Um, so I just, hey, man, find a family member that you know that's down in the area. Call them, make sure they're doing well. Uh, make sure that, you know, once the storm is over, it's time to recover. Be there for the recovery process, not just through the storm. Yeah, we're, we're shooting this on Wednesday right now, Wednesday afternoon, and we're just following along what's happening, and it's making landfall, and it's uh, hard to watch, just devastating. So we talk about football. We're going to talk about a lot of football here today, but yeah. uh, some things are much bigger than football, and this certainly is. Yeah, and, and love that area. If we don't know uh, loved ones or friends that live there, it's such a great place to go visit, whether it's Naples or Fort Myers or Sanibel or, you know, Captiva. And now those people are just facing some rough times. And, with, and shop had it best. Man, this isn't something you think about and pray about for two days. This is going to be a while. Yeah. All right, that being said, you know, where will this game be played? Um, it's the Chiefs and Bucks Sunday night football. And I know, Matt, uh, we've been waiting word for a long time. Again, uh, I know that this lives for a while, uh, this, this podcast – but the latest that we know is if it's moved, we know where it's going. Yeah, it'll be in Minneapolis. Uh, it could still be in Tampa. This is the rough part of filming this now. We don't know what will happen in five minutes. But at least when we're recording this right now, uh, as of now, it's still going to take place in Tampa. But if it's moved, it'll be in Minneapolis. So we'll see. In an interesting point here, and of course, the, the Buccaneers and the Buccaneers families dealing with this and, you know, way beyond what the Chiefs are. But Nico works uh, in with the equipment guys. When you're moving a team and moving a game like this, and we've had to do this with COVID, we've had to do this in 05, when we had the Hurricane Wilma had to go down there the day of the game when we played Miami. But when you move a football team or move a game, you're moving a aircraft carrier. You are not moving a speedboat. I mean, your son's in the middle of this, but uh, the point is, man, th this is not like, oh, hey, let's go play in Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah, all hands on board. you got to be – um, prepared with the plan B, C, D, and E, E, and F. Um, you always have to have a contingency plan mm. on your contingency plan just in case something happens um, as far as getting the uniforms from one location to the other, obviously changing flight plans and hotel arrangements, um, um, all the nutrition, food, and everything that needs to go into planning. But then from a security standpoint, um, you know, having to vet and secure all the hotels and having those things ready. So, again, I think that everybody's there. Their, their, their prayers and thoughts are with the Tampa Bay area and the fans down there and the families but also from an nfl standpoint you got to prepare for what's next um, on the field when someone gets hurt is that next man up mentality yeah. uh, wherever this game is played it's going to be that next man up mentality yeah for sure and we uh gosh and mo this is moving an army really i mean we've got a lot of military followers on the defending the kingdom we think we're the official uh podcast of the army sprint football <laughs> team at west point <laughs> oh yeah uh but that being said, it's a tradition. Let's go around the world with uh, your 13 kingdom defenders. Now, typically I always have 13 in honor of 13 seconds. I have 15 today uh, because I just kept scribbling them down, and why not? So 15 in yeah. honor of Patrick Mahomes, maybe? Absolutely. Plus two. For yeah, sure. 13 plus two in honor of uh, our number 15. <laughs> so we've got James in Sydney, Australia. Uh, he watched the Colts game at 3 a.m. Australia time. So James, no matter the time, is always making sure he's watching uh, the Chiefs. We've got Mohammed from Bangladesh. He studied at UCM and lived in Kansas City and became a fan for life, even though he's back in Bangladesh. Pretty cool. Uh, we've got Dan in Oklahoma. 
Pamela in Tucson. She's originally from St. Joe. Theo in Essex, United Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Jeff in Jericho Springs, Missouri. Danny from Mumford, Tennessee. Uh, before the Titans moved to Tennessee, uh, they had no team. And if you lived there, you could just pick whoever you wanted. And he was a big Christian Okoye fan. Mm-hmm. So he's been a Chiefs fan ever since. Uh, we've got Gail in England. Barbara from a small town southwest of San Antonio. She didn't say which one, but I'm sure you would probably know it. Um, we'll have to let me know where you're listening from uh, specifically, uh, Barbara. Let's time out. 30-second time out. A small town southwest of San Antonio does not work. We have to know the exact <laughs> town. Yeah, because you'll, okay. you'll know the town. You'll know the high school mascot. You'll know yes. it all. I'll, I'll work on it if I don't, but <laughs> come on. Southwest yep. of San Antonio does not work. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got Curtis in Raytown. Uh, he loves watching the flyovers from his house, which is just <laughs> the coolest thing. Love it. it. It reminded me of when I was driving to St. Louis one time, and uh, my wife was driving. I was in the passenger seat, and I see two black specks in the sky uh, somewhere near um, between Kansas City and Columbia, and I realized it was two B-2 bombers just circling, and I'm just losing my mind. So yeah. for him, he gets to watch the, the B-2s fly over his house, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've got Tyler in Phoenix, then Parker in Sacramento. And then I've done a very poor job of tracking our listeners on Apple because on yeah. Apple you can leave comments and say where you're listening sure. from. I discovered this today. So we have <laughs> Elise, I believe is their name. Uh, they've listened at sea and in the air, even at the North Pole. They said not Antarctica, but just the North Pole. Still pretty cool. Yeah. But they're currently listening in Gladstone, Missouri. But they've been all over. Um, we have a listener in St. Louis and then also Travis in Wake Forest, North Carolina. Oh. Yeah, home right. of the Demon Deacons. Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's um, that's fantastic. Appreciate it. But give us the exact town. No more. <laughs> hey, it's almost by something something. That doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> What's not almost is a, another showdown here between Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes. I believe this will be the fourth time in the regular season. Of course, they've had the two postseason matchups, but two generational quarterbacks. Now, I'm what I found one game shop where you played against Tom Brady. Or yeah. you, you, and you that was when you were all banged up in 2005. It was a 26 16 Chiefs win at GEAJ Field at Arrowhead Stadium. Night game is he like a Thursday night or Saturday night? I don't remember. I mean, obviously, uh, you would like to think that I would compartmentalize and categorize and keep a hold of all the uh, Peyton Manning games and all the Tom Brady games, all these great quarterbacks I had a chance to go against, and I would you know rarely uh bring them up in my my, my dreams, uh, but for, I just can't think of it. And I got injured in the 2004 season. I missed the second half of that season, the last 12 games, and then I missed the first 10 of the 05 season because I was on PUP. But I do believe I came back for the end of the year, and maybe I ran down for some kickoffs. I mean, I wasn't 100%, so um, I tried to give the team some uh, some sem- semblance of my, 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 my – you know my abilities on the special teams because that's all I could do at the point at that uh, moment in my life. But uh, rehabbing after an ACL injury, I could run forward, but I couldn't cut. So I just I think I was blazing down the field on kickoff a few times and maybe did a couple kickoff returns. But you mentioned here's the ironic thing: you were injured in the Tampa Bay game in 2004. Yes. I remember that. I can see that game because that was the game Priest Holmes injured his knee and mm-hmm. was never the same. Yeah, coming back from those injuries, man, it's like it's always that one year afterwards. It takes a um, mm-hmm. and this is twenty years ago. So uh, twenty years ago, coming back like a, a Adrian Peterson or some guys coming back after eight months was unheard of. Chris Godwin, Chris Godwin coming yeah, back after eight sure. months. Um, so I, I mean, I was over a year, and I still didn't feel exactly one hundred percent right into that following season. Yeah, I remember Mike Allstott was like ah. all over us in that game. It was a long day, bringing up nightmares. In fact, Tampa Bay's not been a really so think about my brief 29 years as the voice of the Chiefs. Tampa Bay was the last team I had not beaten in my career, and it happened in 2020 yeah. in the COVID year. That was it. Beat all 32 can teams. I, can I give you a non-Chiefs Tampa Bay? So yeah. you, you mentioned Mike Allstott, right? So in yeah. my mind, I think about the worst nightmare I have about Tampa Bay. I'm playing at Tampa. Sean King is the quarterback. I'm playing with the Washington Commandos. Some people call them the Redskins, but the Commanders. Um, outside linebacker, I come scot-free. Punch the ball clear. On all start? Oh, King. Sean King, King setting King. up. Okay. I punch the ball clear. I think I've won the game. Warwick Dunn scoops the ball up, scatters about 13 yards for a first down, keeps the drive going. They score. We get to the end of the game. We get in field goal range. The snapper, I can't remember his name, but his brother, Matt, was his brother. Um, boom, Court. pulled a blank. Uh, kicker, snapper were brothers for the Washington team. Um, he snaps it. Across the grass, never gets it up. We lose the game. Oh wow! Yes, 
Sounds that's like. that's my that's my reoccurring nightmare about you think you're making a great play, you punch the ball, peanut I peanut punched that ball out. You know, I just dude. knew that that was gonna be the end of the game. I might have even start celebrating a little bit early. Only to see Warwick Dunn scoot it, you know, pick it up, mm. scoop and get a first down by like a yard or two, man. We just had to get somebody to get on that ball. You didn't tough. throw your helmet like no, 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 no. Rudd in two thousand two. Those those Cleveland. are those are the nightmares that kinda comes back to You're not calling? Mm. Steering wheel pounders. Steering wheel pounders. Twenty years later, you're at the at the stoplight, <laughs> and you're waiting for the light to go green, and you just pound the steering wheel. I heard you say Tampa Bay. I heard you say Mike Allstar. Yeah. For some reason, all of a sudden, that Warwick Dunn play just yeah. Not, not not to get off track, but that's a good kind of similar experience to what we went through on Sunday against the Colts because little mistakes, mm. you know, and you think you have it, then you don't, and it's tough to bounce back from those things, but you have to. Victory and defeat. Just it's such a small thin line between the two yeah. um, in the NFL. We talk about parity around the league. It's just it's it's a crazy amount between some of the best teams in the league and even some of the worst. Four or five plays, four or five different snaps of the ball. The ball bounces out of bounds, bounces in bounds. It's just the the the, uh, the degree of excellence you have to have between victory and defeat is just so so small. Andy Reid keeps repeating it. This is his 24th season as a head coach. It's never been more that way. It's that way so much. Not only four or five plays, but the parody and just a little bitty thing yep. turns into a real big thing. All right, comparison. Matt, your thoughts here when you look at Brady versus Mahomes, because I got some stats with 66 starts equaling 66 starts. Yeah, well, I think about Brady, my first experience ever at a football game. So the first time I ever went to a Chiefs game. I was a Chiefs fan already, but I was 13 years old when I went to my first ever Chiefs game. It was uh, Chiefs Patriots, <laughs> middle of the afternoon kind of game. And Greg Wesley picked off Tom Brady three Gee times. Mm -hmm. And that was the moment I fell in love with football. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. You know, like Tom Brady comes in here. It gets back to the parody thing. Mm -hmm. At the time, we didn't know he was going to be the most decorated quarterback of all time. But he had already won a bunch of Super Bowls. Yep. And for him to come here, the crowd's going crazy, getting all on him. And for Greg Wesley to pick him off three times for the Chiefs to win that game, it was just the coolest thing. So whenever I see Brady, I think of that game and, and why I fell in love with football. It's insane he's still playing. But uh, that's what I think about. The thing with this game, and we've been so fortunate with these matchups between Mahomes and Brady, because how often do you get to see the greatest of all time in Brady go head-to-head -head with a player that we think can be of that caliber one day? Yes. You don't get to see it very often. You think about basketball. LeBron James and Michael Jordan never played against one another. Mm -hmm. It's all just a metaphorical conversation. Who's better? You never can actually know because they did not play one another. It's pretty cool that – Brady, who's still doing his thing at 45 years old, still a very effective player, can actually compete against Mahomes, who is 27 right now, but we think he is a talent that can one day be one of the greatest to ever do it. And for them to keep going at it over and over again in these, in these huge games is uh, very exciting, and we're fortunate to see it. Yeah, it's a great point. It's almost like Babe Ruth is in the same stadium with Hank Aaron. Yeah. That's what this feels like. You know, generation apart, seemingly, uh, but – Greatness, greatness, right? All right, so I did a comparative study here. 66 starts. This All is right. going to be the 67th start for Patrick Mahomes. So I thought, let's have a little fun. Let's go back to Tom Brady after 66 starts. Patrick Mahomes in all of the major quarterback metrics, the major ones here, uh, we're talking yards, uh, attempts, completions, touchdown to INT ratio, fewest interceptions, Pat uh, wins. Patrick Mahomes is f touchdown passes. First, 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 first. In NFL good. history. <laughs> He's the best quarterback after 66 games in National Football League history. Brady, 5th, 8th, 7th, ninth, 5th. Okay, that's where he was at. So then you look at wins and losses. Well, wait a minute. We, we know we can get tricked with passing stats, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, you can throw for lots of passing yards and not have a winning record. After 66 games, Patrick Mahomes in regular season is 52-14. and 14. Three games better than Tom Brady who was 49-17 and 17 after 66 games. The big difference, Mahomes is 8-3 and three in the postseason. Brady was 9-0. and 0. Mm -hmm. Brady's three Super Bowl championships over the 0 3 and 4 he already had those after 66 starts. Patrick has one. But when you look at that now, because it's not Dan Marino, because Patrick's got his Super Bowl. It's yeah. not like, ah, what a, what a man, he just wasted all those And that steps. was important, I think, to get that early in his career. Done. Get that out. It's not Dan Marino. Forget all those deals. But the fact that when you look at him now from a seriously sideline, I mean, line to line comparison, Mahomes actually overshadows him by a great deal other than the three to one in Super Bowls. Yeah, it's just incredible what 
Patrick's been able to do early on in his career. And you're right, it's not just stat padding, it's winning games. That's the most important thing. And no team in NFL history has ever hosted four consecutive conference title games. You think about Patrick Mahomes, when he's been a starter, his season has never ended shy of the conference title game. That's never happened before at home in NFL history. And it's just amazing that he's our guy. Okay, so this Defending the Kingdom, we've got this far into it and haven't told you the title yet. Uh, <laughs> so it's comparisons. That's obviously the Brady versus Mahomes comparison. Curveballs and then three comebacks. So we're, now we're going to the curveball portion of this podcast. And, Shop, I'm going to get you to weigh in here. Because when you have Brady against Mahomes, it's played up like, oh, this is two old West fighters on the street, right? They're staring each other down. This is Johnny Ringo against Wyatt Earp. No. No, what you really have is Mahomes facing the same, basically the same group of flesh eaters that made his life miserable in Super Bowl 55. And you've got Brady facing maybe the best defensive team that Chiefs have put on the field in the Andy Reid era. So we make it think like it's a gunfight at the OK Corral, but how much different is it really more than that? Man, well, I think EA Sports had it best when they put them both <laughs> on the cover together. They just they knew this was going to be a battle for the ages, and if they could have uh, capitalized on how many times it was really going to happen, they might have waited a year to uh, post it this year as their uh, new cover item. But uh, both teams are just phenomenal how they look at attacking defenses. Uh, Pat Mahomes is great because we know that whenever he receives pressure, he is one of the best of all times getting away from pressure, buying a couple of extra seconds to be able to really hit you with a big play down the field. He has, I call it, uh, mailbox accuracy from 40 yards out. He can throw it in a mailbox 40 yards down, I believe, nine out of ten balls. I've never seen a quarterback on the run being able to throw a ball so accurately down the field, whereas Tom Brady is a whole different beast. He loves to be – uh, uh, encapsulated and protected in that pocket. He loves to be able to step up, climb the pocket, and make a delivery and try to uh, look down a blitz or look down a, a pass rush and really strike you right in the heart um, of your defense. And so the way they, they both attack a defense is so different, but they've both been so successful at it. And so you love to see um, offensive uh, signal callers and, and gunslingers be able to do something their way maximize it, master it, but then be so effective at it. And like you said, from a championship standpoint, man, it takes so much to win a championship in the NFL. It's not really even fair to really put that on one person's shoulder as an as a individual comparison, but that's what people do. Defensively, it's always you're one of 11. All 11 guys got to be on the same page for that defense to be um, – each snap to be counted as a win because, as we know, any, any mistake in the back end gives up a touchdown. You don't get the pass rush. Two people take the wrong gap, you give a big run up. So defensively is so uh, detailed orientated about everybody, all 11 on the same page. That's the one thing I think the Bucks have done um, over, you know, um, um, historically, even, even, even when, um, you know, back with the uh, uh, Kiffin days and stuff like that, yeah. uh, Monty Kiffin days, that, 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 that base Tampa 2 defense, naming a defense out of, uh, <laughs> after a defense has been something that's uh, been unreal, but, but it, they played it so well for so long. And they're still doing it to this day, that too high shell, forcing you to take the, the short stuff, giving their, 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 their strikers and hitters a chance to come up and lay a lick on you and try to separate you from the ball. That's what they do over and over again. And then what they do, Ben don't break, get their backs against the wall when it gets to the red zone, and then they fight, scratch, and claw to keep you out of the end zone. All they want you to do is keep snapping the ball, and they think that their pass rushers, the way the physicalness, they, they, they tackle the ball. They're going to separate you and cause a big play, and they'd rather do that than give anything over the top. So they don't take a lot of risks, um, and, and they, they, everybody knows exactly where they're supposed to be on that defense. And I think our defense is starting to be, become a little bit more like that. Um, we, we, we're having guys that can definitely change um, every offense, the, the way you hope to run a play. I mean, Chris Jones is a, is a, is a game wrecker. I uh, know he took a lot of heat from saying too many words and saying, you know, he whispered in someone's ear uh, and got a flag to let the game keep going. And, and that's uh, frowned upon, I guess, in the NFL now. Uh, trash talking is something that's um, become a little bit more subjective, I guess. Uh, but, but, but as a player, in between the white lines, that, that, I mean, he's such a dominant, um, impactful player. Um, and, and now he's surrounded by other playmakers. I think this defense, like you said, is one of the best ones um, since Andy's been here in Kansas City. So two gunfighters in the street, or is it the gunfighter fighting the posse of the other gunfighter? Yeah. Well, this is certainly a different matchup than just Mahomes versus Brady because if you look at a few different things here, 
Uh, the Chiefs' defense, like Sean mentioned, has been exceptional this season. They've been really, really good. Think about the points allowed last week. You can't really look at it that way because one of those Colts' drives started on the five-yard line. The, Col the Chiefs' defense last week was awesome. I mean, they allowed 259 total yards against the Colts. That was the fewest they've allowed in a game since week eight of the 2020 season. They had 10 quarterback hits and five sacks in that game. They were really, really good. When a loss happens, it's easy to look at just what happened at the end. So you look at the final touchdown drive, you look at the Chris Jones penalty. Yeah, those are negatives. But for the most part, this defense played really well. And if they play like that moving forward, the Chiefs are going to win a lot of games. Mm -hmm. I also like how Chris took accountability for that after the game. He wasn't blaming anybody. He said, that's on me, won't happen again. And that's how you move on from those kinds of things. The Chiefs as a whole took accountability for everything that happened yes. in that game. It'd be easy to point fingers, easy to say, hey, if so-and-so didn't screw up, then we would have won. Good teams don't do that. And the Chiefs didn't do that. Everyone put it on themselves. And then in turn, everyone else was lifting each other up. So that's what you want in the locker room uh, after games like that. This Bucks defense is really, really good. I mean, they're legit. They're very similar to the group that we saw in the Super Bowl. So number one scoring defense in the NFL. They've allowed just 27 points through three games. They're the number four overall total defense, allowing just over 300 yards per game. They force the most turnovers in the NFL with eight. That includes five interceptions. Uh, they have the third most sacks in the NFL with 11. And one thing that really stood out to me, you'll like this, they have the fewest missed tackles in the NFL this year with only 13. So they're consistently wrapping guys up. You're not breaking tackles on these guys uh, and creating big plays. They have their great edge rushers, Shaq Barrett. We know him. He's been there for a long time now. Uh, and also Joe Tryon Shoyinka, uh, their other edge rusher, uh, second-year player. He's very good. They've combined for 19 pressures this year. Great push inside. Vita Vea, I mean, all 347 pounds of him. They rotate guys in. Raheem Nunez Roches is there, an old Former friend. Chief, yeah. uh, William Golston, uh, Logan Hall, a rookie. Their linebackers are legit, and their secondary is really good. So this defense is really, really good. The Chiefs' offense will have to be at their best against these guys, but the Buccaneers' offense has struggled a lot this season, like way more than you would think. If you're, you just think about Tom Brady and the Buccaneers, their offense is probably rolling, right? Not really the case so far this year. They've had a lot of injuries, which uh, is part of that, injuries along the offensive line, injuries at the skill positions. But The Evans suspension was big. Exactly, yeah, those things are big. Uh, but they've just struggled. I mean, the last two weeks against New Orleans, they had 260 offensive yards. Then against Green Bay, they had 285 offensive yards. Those two games rank in the bottom five in terms of total yards of the Tom Brady era in Tampa Bay. They have just eight plays of 20 or more yards this season, second fewest in the NFL. They've gone three and out on 25% of their possessions. Very surprising for a Tom Brady team. And then one that really surprised me as well, they have the fewest red zone drives in the NFL this season with just five. They've scored touchdowns on just two of those red zone drives, and three of those red zone drives happened in week one. So it's not as simple as Mahomes versus Brady because there's a lot of other stuff going into this, particularly with the two defenses and two offenses that – have a lot of firepower, but especially last week, neither one was what we kind of expect. I've seen the 2022 Tampa Bay Buccaneers before. <laughs> I've seen them. I've seen them. It's the 2015 Denver Broncos. You mentioned, all, I'll throw in a couple more. They've only had two five-minute drives in three weeks. Uh, they're having a hard time staying on the field. Eight 20-plus passes, that's all. Uh, inside the 30 touchdown percentage is your big play reference. They can't get to the red zone because they can't get even inside the 30. I mean, they're looking, only Denver is worse in their inside 30 touchdown percentage. The defensive side reminds me of the 2015 Denver Broncos. We know how that story ended. This is a defense. The, bright, the, the lights are so bright on Tom Brady mm -hmm. that it overshadows what might be the NFL's best defense. And, Shop, I'm going to lead you into this one. Because what they do, you, when you play Tampa Bay, we saw it in Super Bowl 55, it's like taking a bicycle ride in Jurassic Park. <laughs> I'm serious. These dudes rip the flesh off you and take yeah. the ball. You mentioned eight takeaways already. That's tied for the league lead. But they had 29 a year ago. In the playoffs, in just two playoff games, they had seven takeaways. There is a mindset with the Tampa Bay. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned those early, the Tony Dungy, yeah. they called it buckball. And there's only 21 barbers that have ever played the National Football League. I looked it up. <laughs> <laughs> there's only 20. You're one of the 21. I'm one of 21. But All one right. of them was Ronde Barber. And he was a good one. Oh, He's boy. Pretty good. He might be the best one. And Derek Brooks and those cats. But that mentality is what this Tampa Bay defense has now. Yeah. Simeon I mean, Rice, Warren Sapp, 
uh, like you said, Brooks, Barber. Um, but I'm going to throw it Levante David. Devin White might be the best linebacker duo right yeah. now in the league. Yeah. Yeah. These safeties, Mike Edwards and Antoine Winfield Jr., remember giving the peace sign to Tyreek? Yes. And th- these dudes can play. They've yeah. got up the middle. They pressure. They cover. They rip the ball from you. Mm-hmm. What about that mentality? I mean, I think the mentality is just they, they, they know how to hunt. They hunt as a pack. It's no individuals. You talk about missed tackles. You don't worry about missed tackles when you know you got a brother right beside you. And it makes you so confident. Um, the, the way they pursue the ball, the way they track, like you said, it, it's kind of like they, they feel like it's chum in the water and like sharks, they come in to, just come to, like piranha, just come to eat. And offensively, you get, you watch film and they keep, they hit everything moving. It does get you a little nervous about um, going over the middle, uh, about taking the hit, about ball security, knowing. And when you start thinking about that, you forget how to execute. You start, you forget what you're supposed to be doing because you're so worried about what they do on defense. Um, there's no, there's no easy answer to it. You got to be um, laser focused. You got to come in and put in a, a good weeks of work and understand that these guys are going to be punching at the ball, clawing at the ball. You got to have great ball security all the way through the ground, all the way through the, the echo of the whistle. You, you know you're going to get this. So no excuse. If, if, if a ball becomes dislodged, no excuse. If, the, if, if, the, if somebody gets to the quarterback and, and they're not going to go for the sack, they're going for the strip, they understand the deficits they have against their offense. They know what kind of offense they have in the room. They practice against it every day. So, that, so the mindset of a defense like that is we got to rip, strip, get the ball. We got to turn it over. We got to get pick six. We got to scoop and score. It's not just good enough to stop a team. We can't just trade field goals and field position. Our offense isn't good. That's what they're saying in their locker room. Our offense isn't good enough. We see the stats. We know Tom Brady is doing everything he can just to get us in, in, in the red zone a few times. But defensively, they got to be thinking about keeping cats under under like 10 points, single digits. And that's that's tough for a defense. But if you look down the line, they got the manpower to do it. They got the skill level to do it. And to your point, and, and Matt talked about, they've only allowed uh, 27 points, but they've only scored 44 offensive points. One of their touchdowns is a pick six by Mike mm-hmm. Edwards. So that just brings that point to life. So we're going to close it out here. The first part was comparisons, Mahomes versus Brady. Oop, curveball. Is it really Mahomes versus Brady or they're against each other's posse? We'll close out this way with comebacks. One of these teams is going to be 2-2 two and two after this game, unless yeah. there's a tie. But somebody is going to be a real good 3-1, and one, and somebody's going to be a 2-2 two and two going, ooh. So – Let's talk about comebacks here. Matt, I'll let you jump in. Yeah, well, the thing about this team, kind of like what I said earlier, uh, without everyone's taking accountability, is you can't let things snowball when things go poorly like they did in Indianapolis. And what I love about this team is they have the mental fortitude and the resolve to not let that happen. Tough test here against the Bucks. I mean, you want to get back on track and you have to face the number one defense in the NFL, but these guys also never shy away from a challenge. And you look at Patrick Mahomes' numbers after losses in his career, he's 10-3 and three following a loss in his career. It's pretty good. And one thing we haven't talked about but that is important is how good the Chiefs are against the NFC every single year. No team has more wins against the NFC since 2013 uh, in the AFC than the Chiefs. And since 2018, the Chiefs have the most wins of any AFC team against the NFC, and they also have more wins than one NFC team. The Chiefs have more wins against the NFC since 2018 than the Detroit Lions do. The Chiefs have 15, the Lions have 14. It's crazy. So the Chiefs always dominate in these games. This is going to be tough, but in his career, Mahomes is 15-3 and three against the NFC. So you lean on those kinds of things. This would be a great opportunity for the Chiefs to get back on track and to remind everybody on the biggest stage – We're still here. Nobody panic. The Chiefs are still here, Uh, and hopefully that's what we see. And even though it's not Mahomes versus Brady like we've talked about, it's still nice to beat Brady. So, Yeah, and he's had some of his worst memories against the Kansas City Chiefs. Tore his ACL when Pollard got at the knees. All right, that's one. Two, 14, he gets pulled out of the game, and the Chiefs are like, he's done, he's done, and Belichick's done. Guess not. Uh, You look at the 17, we're going to celebrate the championship the year before. Whoops. Uh, Chiefs put 42 on him, bye-bye, beat him in Foxborough, and that's when the Foxborough people knew the earth was moving differently. It was going the other way, that the sun was coming up in the west, uh, (laughs) and they don't like it. They still don't like the Chiefs in Foxborough. Uh, But that being said, yes, the Chiefs have had some moments against Brady. You played in this league, though. So to prevent, you're playing a big-time opponent. You, we just laid this out. But you to prevent a back-to-back loss as a player, what are you thinking? Man, quick mindset, man. You just got to be, be really quick to uh, press that reset button and uh, laser focus back on a week, good weeks of practice. You got to know the process. The process is something you got to trust. 
the way we practice, the way we go about our business is always to um, expand the playbook, to be better defensively than we was a week ago. Uh, we hear Spags always talking about stacking good weeks, stacking good films, stacking good games. 52 minutes of a really good game defensive spoiled by the last eight minutes. That that doesn't – one thing doesn't eliminate the other. And you got to be so proud of the way they went. And that's a team that had a guy, Jonathan Taylor, that's been running uh, ragtag on this league for a long time. That's not an easy – that's not an easy team to stop as far as running the ball. They have some really good offensive linemen when it comes to uh, uh, run blocking, and we pretty much stifled them for 52 minutes. So I'm not going to throw everything out with the, you know, with, with, with one penalty and erase it all. But sometimes a loss, you know, a, a slight setback uh, prepares you for a major comeback. And this is an awesome time against an awesome team to come back to offensively show that we are capable of taking what the defense gives you. The Tampa Bay Buccaneer, with all the great stats and the turnovers and the great hitters and personnel, every defense on every snap gives you something. You just got to be willing to take it. And once you take it, you got to be able to exploit it. One tackle, make a miss, and then it's, you know, Katie Barty Gates. That, that's, just, that's, the, that's just the way NFL is. And if you're not capable of doing that over and over and over again, they, they take advantage. That one time you get a little bit too greedy. You get a little bit too greedy and hold on to that ball. You're looking a little bit downfield. That's when Shaq Barrett comes. And then when they come to sack you, they're not going just to put a sack. They want the strip, sack, fumble, recovery, try to run it in themselves to make up for that offensive deficit they have. So um, I just think that you just got to get laser focused. You go back to the process. Process is always greater than the product. Take care of your business during the week of practice. Focus and be prepared. Once game time hits, it's all about that one series, that one um, assignment, um, execution, assignment, alignment, take care of business on all three all three phases. We've talked about offense and defense, but we know it's a third phase. We take care of all three phases this week and get back on the winning streak. Favorite play of the Colts game was when Jonathan Taylor wanted to go to the top bunk of the bunk bed. Oh, yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> Nick Bolton's going to stay down. <laughs> yep. I got the top bunk. Uh, <laughs> so we'll close this way. We talked about comparisons, curveballs, and comebacks. This back-to-back -back thing, you'd think Tom Brady, is he just doesn't lose back-to-back. -back. You mm. just – no, wait a minute. Four straight years, he's lost back-to-back -back games. Look it up, 21, 20, 19, and 18. He's at some point during each one of those four years, he's at L, L. And you mentioned with Patrick Mahomes in his first 66 starts, only three times has he lost back-to-back. -back. In 2018, with a bye week in between, so there's a <laughs> trick question, but in 19, when he was hurt in those two games against Houston and Indianapolis, and then also in last year in 20, uh, 2021, back-to-back uh, -to -back on one time. Hope I got that right. But anyway, only three times that he's lost back to back, and Brady's lost back to back the last four years. All right, here let's, we go. Let's make it five, huh? Let's make it five. Yeah. Well, I like that idea. <laughs> he's shop barber shop. Sean Barber. He's the stat man. Matt Stat. Uh, Matt McMullen, senior team reporter. Mitch Holtis, voice of the Chiefs. Comparisons, curveballs, comebacks. Chiefs, Bucks. Prayers for everyone affected by Hurricane Ian. Ten, ten, touchdown! Lock it down! And the celebration begins at Arrowhead.